A few centuries ago, some dude named Sir Isaac Newton got so offended from an apple falling on his head, he decided to figure out why and how things move. He later figured out how gravity is a thing and that it pulls you down. He also figured out that if we want to move in one direction, we have to push ourselves from something or push something away from us in the opposite direction. And after a few centuries and decades, we've made rockets based off his discoveries. But what do they push away from? The first rockets made use of solid propellant, of which the best was determined to be ammonium perchlorate composite propellant. This ammonium perchlorate is usually made from sodium chlorate industrially. So, let's try and make some today. Now how do we actually obtain the sodium chlorate? Turns out it's through a process called electrolysis, where you essentially chuck three extra oxygen atoms onto the sodium chloride molecule. Now electrolysis works by passing electrical current through a conductive solution of water, and usually put a solute such as salt inside if you want to get chlorates, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now, to pass the current, you need to put two metallic ends over here to obviously connect them to a battery, of which uh, you're going to need two. One called the anode, connected to the positive, one called the cathode, connected to the negative. Now, the issue here is that the anode actually undergoes something called oxidation. Essentially, it rusts at incredibly high speeds. So it degrades really quickly, and so we need to use some special ones that don't degrade. So here's a few. There is mixed metal oxide, which is pretty damn expensive. It's the best there is for chlorates, and you can only find it from some Chinese suppliers. Very shady stuff. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any Chinese friends who will hook me up with an MMO anode for 20 bucks, so not exactly an option for me. Next one is platinum. Platinum is platinum, so it's priced like platinum. It's expensive, really expensive, but it's like very good performance. It lasts an insanely long time, uh, but you need to watch the, the salt content in the water, not go down. Then there's platinized. All the advantages of platinum, uh, except it's way cheaper, but it lasts a little bit less long because it's only a surface coating, so it still would degrade after a long time and you wouldn't be able to use it. Then there's a surprisingly good one, graphite. It's extremely cheap, it's literally just carbon. Uh, you can find it pretty much anywhere, batteries, probably on Amazon for like, what, five bucks? Out of, out of pe pencils. Overall, sounds like a great deal. Then there's lead oxide. Um, if you want to give yourself lead poisoning and do a crap ton of labor for an anode, be my guest. I'm not doing that. Then there's sacrificial anodes. They're not special at all. It's actually a random piece of metal you can just chuck at the positive and pray to Jesus it doesn't degrade. Um, let's not do that. I decided to opt for graphite because the advantages just seem really great, right? I mean, it doesn't really degrade, it's cheap, it's abundant, so let's just choose graphite, right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and test, and we'll see how it went. Now, it turns out graphite was a complete backstabber. See, I had it connected over here with the wire, and it broke off. So current wasn't even flowing for the last of the four days I had it running. What a waste of time. So, okay, graphite hates me, whatever, I hate you too. But I have this beautiful platinized dano that I don't hate. This is salt, by the way. I, I did a little test, it doesn't degrade. And this platinized anode is so great uh, that we can compare it to graphite here. See? Its current density, aka how much it can take of electrical uh, flow, before it starts eroding, is 300 milliamps per square centimeter, compared to carbon or graphite here, which is only 30. This is 10 times more efficient. Yeah, it's also 10 times more expensive, but at least it's linear, so I'm not gonna complain. But then we have MMO, mixed metal oxide, at 1000 milliamps per square centimeter. The difference between platinum and MMO is absolutely not linear. See, this thing over here costs twice the price, but it's nearly got four times <laughs> the current density. Or, well, three times, I guess, would be closer. So it's definitely a good deal, but 
I can't afford that deal, nor can I afford to risk buying a fake one from China. So, I'm gonna have to stick with the Platinum I have. And I'm running this whole thing using uh, this little charging brick at 5 volts 2 amps because I'm not risking my benchtop power supply just yet. So, let's see if it works. Okay, so after 4 days of running the cell at whatever the hell amps 5 volts, and another 4 days of drying and then me purifying, I'm left with this yield. Okay, I don't want to talk about it, it's really embarrassing, it's, it's honestly awful. Uh, as much as I want to curl up into a ball and cry, I'm not gonna. Instead, I'm gonna understand, and you're also gonna understand, I was using a phone charger. 5 volts. With the resistance of salt water, the amperage I was getting was probably awful, which makes my yield technically good. Uh, on the green, grand scheme of things, it's still completely awful, but we don't talk about the grand scheme of things. Now, okay, um, we've seen that the process is possible, right? I mean, I, I managed to get something. I'm not even going to show how well it burns with sugar, because it's completely impure and burns very badly. But it burns, okay? So next, I'm going to use a current control and voltage-controlled power supply that can deliver 30 volts, 10 amps, to this platinum anode. Now, seeing as it has a limit, which I already saw was 4 amps uh, online, I'm only gonna run this at, well, 4 amps. And what's fun is that it's not going to fluctuate, it's gonna stay at 4 amps, I'm gonna keep it there, and just crank up the voltage, uh, making it current control. And I'm gonna leave this once again for 4 days. Now, if you saw my um, potassium chloride video, uh, you've seen that I managed to make roughly 60 grams in two days at running at 4 amps. So, here I'm expecting expecting roughly 120. Now, you should remember, this is not potassium chloride, this is sodium chloride. The purification is, like, way harder. But, nonetheless, I'm still gonna do it. So, I'll catch you guys with the final yield. Okay, so we finally succeeded in making our sodium chlorate. Now, I had to brute force it a little bit. I used a, a graphite anode that I pulled from a D-cell. It's about five times this uh, diameter. And um, it worked great, five days, one amp. Um, it just got completely eaten uh, over the last day or two because the chloride concentration was dropping in the solution. I used 30 grams of uh, just regular table salt in about 80 to 100 milliliters of solution. And it was great, uh, because we managed to get something. Uh, but the anode got completely eaten alive, almost. Uh, it's a about twice as thick as this one only. It's not that big anymore. But a success is a success, even though our anode is completely eaten. Uh, I didn't use the platinum, because platinum is expensive, and I wasn't going to risk it for this, so no thanks. But I'm, as I'm sure you've all been waiting for, uh, we're gonna go burn this. But just a little disclaimer, earlier in the video I was talking about rating anodes, you know? And uh, I was talking about lead dioxide uh, coatings, and I overlooked one major detail. As it turns out, you can basically play graphite with it, and instead of taking out chlorate and then putting it back into a pure solution and then making perchlorate, you can go directly from chloride to perchlorate. Um, making this like infinitely more efficient. Not to mention the current density this it can take is so much higher. Yes, it requires some labor. Yes, you play around with toxic salts. Yes, you might have some uh, lead dioxide falling off in the solution at the end. But, for all of those advantages, I quite frankly don't care about the disadvantages. Uh, there are ways we can overcome them. Toxic lead salts, we work with respirators, gloves, maybe hell, a hazmat suit if I need to. But, that will come in another video. For now, let's go burn this. So we went full circle. I first got betrayed by, uh, you know, a graphite anode, 
uh, and then I was so pissed, I decided to use Platinum. I used Platinum, it never really worked properly. And I went back to Graphite, and that time it actually worked. Maybe the real betrayer here was Platinum all along. Uh, but nonetheless, I still love Platinum, and we still got our end product. So, this video is a success, and I hope you guys enjoyed the burn test. Now, about the next video on this, you know, little rocket propellant making series, we're going to be making lead dioxide anodes, I decided, because turning chloride into perchlorate is just so much more labor efficient that it, I would be crazy not to. So, yeah, next video we'll be plating these anodes with lead uh, dioxide, which should be pretty easy from what I've seen online. Just to get a good coating is a little difficult. But a bit of trial and error will clear that up. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!